Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. So, as you guys probably know, or maybe not, there is a new vehicle coming to Battlefield 2042 this September 10th. And that vehicle is going to be the UH-60, which is a transport helicopter. And it's going to work just like Condor in the Super Height. That's the role that it's going to have. And with that vehicle, there is also going to be an update, which is called the 8.1. And there's going to be a lot of changes in that update as well. In today's video, we're going to go and take a look at the characteristics of this UH-60 helicopter. And also the change lock of this update 8.1. So every single detail that you guys need to know will be detailed in this video. So without further ado, let's just get straight into it and see what's going on. So this Tuesday marks the arrival of the UH-60 to Battlefield 2042, coupled with a new repair system and cyber warfare protection functionality. This new vehicle, Vault Drop, will allow you to transport your squad across the map with ease and power. Play between the September 10th to 24th on two new game modes, Breakthrough UH-60 Chaos and Control Unlocked, and earn ribbons to permanently add the UH-60 to your arsenal. And also there's going to be an update 8.1. If you guys are wondering what's going to happen if you can't play the game between 10th to 24th of September, there's going to be an assignment uh, on September 24th that is going to let you unlock the UH-60. So if you're missing this date, like this time period, it doesn't really matter. You're going to be able to unlock the helicopter anyways, so don't worry about that. So we do know that the UH-60 is an utility tactical transport aircraft system. That's what they like to call it. And you can basically transport your squad across the map. It's going to have a lot of seating and gun power, just like the Condor or the Super Hind. And it will allow you to transport your squad tactically and allows you to basically reposition your squad anywhere you want with coordination and style. As a part of the transition from Battlefield Portal to Battlefield 2042, the UH-60 will also bring a new repair system and cyber warfare protection system to all-out warfare variants alongside improvements to its camera and flying characteristics. So this was just one part of Update 8.1. We're going to have the uh, UH-60 helicopter, but we are going to get to the change log as well. If you guys don't know, uh, we are going to have some vault drops that this time are going to be some vehicles. So there are vehicles from Battlefield Portal that are coming to Battlefield 2042 and they start basically with the UH-60. We are going to get more in the future. Uh, there is no exact date for it, but we do know for a fact that the, the UH-60 will not be the only one. We're going to have some more. Oh, and I was about to forget. If you guys enjoyed the content, if you think the video today was informative, do make sure to hit the like button to help this video reach out to more Battlefield fans like yourself. And if you want to not miss out on future videos, subscribing to the channel is one great way to do that. And it will give me something in return. So don't forget to do that as well. All right, so now let's take a look at the general changes. Uh, I'm just going to give you the most important things. There are some bug fixes as well, but I don't really think it's worth your time. And I'm just going to give you the straight up important news that you need. Okay. So one of the things that is going to be fixed is the issue where the AI soldiers would sometimes stop moving when the AI max health was lowered through Battlefield Portal. This is not really a Battlefield Portal only problem. I know for a fact that even in All Out Warfare, if there is an AI moving and the health bar is just full, if you basically damage them, like shoot them or anything, uh, they're going to stop moving and they're going to look straight at you. So that kind of behavior is now going to be fixed. I don't think it really matters to people who are playing in full servers, but for people who are actually playing in regions where there aren't as many players, uh, it's going to really matter. Like the AI has to get better and better every single time. For 2042, basically we don't have any option around it. It's some part of the game. I, I would say it's a part of the core gameplay of Battlefield 2042, unfortunately, because we don't have the server browser. It's something we have to deal with. All right, so for vehicles, there is something very interesting happening to the Wildcat. And that is having the option to basically use the active protection system, also known as the APS, on your wildcat wildcats already are strong they're like away from the battlefield always camping in some hilltop or somewhere it's really hard to get get them even for jets because they really do have some uh strong counterplay against air vehicles giving them the active protection system is somehow controversial but it is what it is we're gonna see how it works but in my opinion it really is a strong vehicle when it's not in combat so you know people tend to camp on hilltops in their base uh, they have a good range to hunt down those jets, those helicopters. I don't think they really needed to add this feature. 
But anyway, there is also a dev comment about it. Let's read it and see what they have to say. A few updates ago, we removed the ability to Irish's APS-36 shootdown sentinel to intercept anti-vehicle weapons to stop exploitative behaviors that is allowed between the gadget and vehicles. With that change now live, we are giving the Wildcat its own active protection system to allow for dynamic engagements between this vehicle and aircrafts. I don't really know what they mean by dynamic engagements. I'm not really sure what they mean, but all I know is that Wildcats are really hard to take down, even for like air vehicles, because they are ridiculously strong against them. And even though they don't have the active protection system, they would still do their job, considering that most of the players who play with Wildcat are camping on hilltops, bases, in buildings even. So I'm not really sure about this change, but we're gonna have to wait and see how it works. There's a change to the Condor as well. The transition of flight to vertical and vice versa for the Condor is gonna be reduced. It simply means that uh, people who play Condor know exactly what I'm talking about. There are two modes with it. There's a flight mode and there's a vertical mode where you basically float and stop to analyze what's going on, on the ground or engage with targets on the ground as well. The time you need to change modes between flight and vertical, like floating, it's gonna reduce and it's gonna make the Condor even faster. Also, uh, Condor and Super Hind uh, will no longer be available in Breakthrough and they're gonna be replaced with the UH-60. Now, reading the comments, some people didn't really like this. Probably it's because they want to somehow promote people to play with the UH-60. I guess it can be, uh, like this change can be reverted in some future updates, but right now they won't be available in Breakthrough for some reason. But in my opinion, they're just trying to like encourage people to play the UH-60 and get the feedbacks, make the vehicle even better. Also, there are some changes to the UH-60 uh, from Portal to All Out Warfare. Let's take a look at these changes and see what they've done with the vehicle. Fixed an issue with the UH-60 where systemic damage was not being applied properly to each part. Fixed an issue with the UH-60 where certain EMP effects were active even if the vehicle was not under EMP situations. The UH-60 is now available on all Conquest maps, which is something obvious. It has to be available on Conquest when it comes to all-out warfare. The UH-60 will now have two new utilities available within the Battlefield 2042 variant with the Repair System and Cyber Warfare Protection System. These utilities will not be available within the Battlefield Portal variant of the UH-60. So now we have two variants of UH-60, the Battlefield Portal one, uh, which is like the old-fashioned one, and the all-out warfare UH-60, which has some more functionalities and utilities. Proximity scan range increased to 4D meters for the UH-60 and fixed an issue with the UH-60 not showing tooltips when in first person view. So that's basically all the update has to offer. Also at the end, there's some kind of statement that says this announcement may change as we listen to community feedback and continue developing and basically evolving our live service and content. We will always strive to keep our community as informed as possible. So they might actually change their mind about removing Condor and Superhind and replacing them with UH-60 in Breakthrough. That's something that I saw in the comment section. People were completely against. This was basically everything that you need to know about the update 8.1. It goes live on September 10th, which means uh, this week's Tuesday. My opinion on the update, uh, removing the Condor and Super Hind from Breakthrough is just stupid. It has, like, it doesn't really make sense. They're basically being uh, replaced by the UH-60, but it's not convenient. Not at all. And giving the Wildcat APS is, is like, something risky. I don't think it really works. A lot of people are disagreeing, already disagreeing with it in the comment section. And I do know for a fact that they actually might be right. I mean, I really trust the community more than I trust DICE. If you guys have any thoughts on this, do make sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about the change log. What do you really think about the big changes with this update? What do you think about the portal weapons that are remaining? You let me know what you think about all this in the comment section. And until next time, guys, stay cool.